Welcome back to our channel. We want to thank you for watching. In this video, we shall be looking on how you continent of Africa and why African government and strategic organizations should pay closer attention with regards to activities in the region, the geopolitical situation, and why Africa has become so important for the world. The United States of America recognizes Africa's strategic significance, but its influence on the continent may be compromised. If you look at different aspects, Africa has become a key stage for strategic competition between actors which vying for sometimes irreconcilable interest. The geopolitical relevance of the continent is set to increase dramatically. Africa's population is booming and its mineral resources will be a high demand for the green energy transition. Moreover, the African bloc looks poised to play a determining role in multilateral institutions. The political landscape has significantly changed since the second half of the 20th century. African countries are now better equipped to reap the benefits of this systemic competition. If you look at the United States strategy for Africa, Africa has never been a priority for American policymakers. While the Biden administration is no exception, the United States 2022 strategy towards Sub-Saharan Africa clearly recognizes the relevance of the continent within the current fragmentation world order. The document highlights three very important sections. Africa will account for 15% of the world's population by 2050. It holds 30% of the world's reserves of critical minerals and it makes up to 28% of the United Nations voting groups. But the rationale for the United States' engagement in the region is also based on the need to counteract expanding influence of other actors, namely China and Russia. In recent decades, the United States policy for Africa has been determined mostly by security concerns, especially out of the September 11. Allegiance across the continent were shipped. Washington has maintained a strong security footprint in the continent, including permanent military bases in Djibouti. It also has several military facilities in East Africa, West Africa, and the Sahel region, where it plays a critical, albeit discreet role in counter-terrorism operations within the continent of Africa. Both Washington and Brussels would like African countries to unequivocally condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but that's not what we are seeing so far. When compared with other actors like the European Union or China, the United States approach has been characterized by trade and investment rather than development assistance on loans. Instead of broad agendas, Washington relies on specific programs like the 2000 African Growth and Opportunity Act and the 2003 President's Emergency Plan for Aid and Relief of 2013, looking at the Power African Initiative, or most recently, Prosper African Initiative designed by the Trump administration at the time. We have made lots of videos on this particular channel. If you are new here, we encourage you to check the entire channel for you to see more exciting and educating content regards to the global African perspective. Without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. The new strategy reaffirmed declaration from the 2017 when the national security strategy named China and Russia as actors attempting to erode American security and prosperity within the continent of Africa. The document states that the U.S. rivalry are employing non-military tools to advance their influence and interest on the African continent. The United States strategy for African countries has become much more comprehensive and now includes four far-reaching goals. The first is fostering openness and open society in accordance with international liberal world order led by the U.S. The second is to deliver democratic and security dividends based on idea that Democracy is exportable through positive inducement and punitive measures such as sanctions. The third is to advance pandemic recovery and economic opportunity. Finally, the full target is support conservative climate adoption and also energy transition. In light in this particular ambitious goal, several factors will be critical in shaping U.S. relations with African countries. Much depends on the future of the African Growth and Opportunity Act, set to expire in 2025. Africa accounts for only 1% of U.S. foreign trade. The European Union and China trade much more with the continent of Africa than any other continent. To compete with these rivalries and contribute to prosperity across the continent, 
the United States will have to design a more effective consensual trade framework at the time of rising protectionism. Given that so many African countries face unsustainable debt levels, engagement with the region will also depend on the capacity of external factors. Financial institutions, but also key lenders like China, will play an important role through debt readjustments and forgiveness. Beijing could also attempt to turn this leverage into a competitive advantage, reducing American influence. The war in Ukraine is also expected to affect the United States' relationship with Africa in the short to medium term. Both Washington and Brussels would like African countries to unequivocally condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But the recent backlash against Western presence on the continent suggests that such an alignment will be difficult to secure. Moving ahead, if you look at the strategic competition and rivalry within the region, the competition for influence in Africa reflects the broader global context. While their interests may not always converge, the United States and European Union both want to maintain a Western-led liberal order. They will likely cooperate in some areas, like democracy and climate change and competition in other areas like trade. China, in turn, could pose a threat to American interests and influence. In Africa, Beijing has mostly focused on economic cooperation by reducing Africa's infrastructural deficit, buying African commodities and providing credit facilities. But its influence and goals go well beyond the economic sphere. Chinese leadership aims to change the international system from within. Besides joining Beijing-led institutions like the Asian Infrastructural Development Bank, African countries are increasing aligning with China's position on the international institutions like the United Nations. The U.S. has long recognized that China's don't ask, don't tell policy towards African regimes gave Beijing a strategic advantage, but Washington probably failed to grasp the extent to which the Chinese model will prove attractive to African leaders. It also underestimated the political efforts deployed by China to increase influence in the continent of Africa under the rule of the President of China, Xi Jinping, through Communist Party's International Liaise Department. The country has also opened its way in terms of trade and other aspects. If you look at Russia, Russia, like China, competes with the United States and the European Union influence in Africa. Russia is not a newcomer there. There are many members of the continent's military and political elites were trained in the Soviet Union, but Moscow's new strategy has led its grand diplomatic jump into 2019 with the first Russian-African summit. North Africa especially has become an important strategic region for Moscow. Moscow sees the region with borders like NATO's south flank as a strategic location to destabilize the continent of Europe in different ways. The Western countries will likely find it difficult to give up to the rhetoric. The Kremlin's approach is mostly, though not exclusively, based on military cooperation. It is the main provider of military equipment to African countries, according to 44% of the continent's armed import. While Russia has traditionally maintained close relations with uh, Algeria, Egypt, Sudan, and Zimbabwe, it's now expanding its influence into the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Mali, and Uganda. In some countries like Mali and Central African Republic, Moscow has used the Wagner Group as a proxy to secure its interest. Russian mining companies are also active in several countries in the region, including Angola, the Central African Republic, Guinea, Namibia, and also Zimbabwe. If you look at concluding this particular episode in regards to the strategic and geopolitical importance and the <laughs> The forces challenging Western influence in Africa are nationalist and reject the idea of a post-sovereign world order. Western actors tend to underestimate the potential appeal of the alternative models that China and Russia represent. It is no accident, for example, that those protesting France's presence in influence in Mali, Burkina Faso, or Democratic Republic of the Congo often carry Russian flags or photos of Vladimir Putin. The most likely scenario for the American strategy in Africa is one of fragmented influence. The approach will likely lead to engagement with more African countries, but many developments could compromise its success. Africa is not a priority for Washington, and the United States of America's hegemony is being challenged on multiple fronts. 
expected to deepen ahead of the 2024 presidential election, which hinder consensus on foreign policy. Moreover, the goals set by Washington and by the European Union are perceived by some being disconnected from the African needs and priorities. The West will likely find it difficult to live up to its rhetoric and cooperation with authoritarian regimes across the continent is expected to continue. In parallel, China and Russia are also faced with critical challenges. In China, population decline and economic slowdown may lead to economic crisis with far-reaching consequences, both internationally and internally. Russia, in turn, may be forced to reduce its presence on the continent, including true proxy actors like the Wagner Group, while the demand for arms and security corporations will remain. Russia's intervention in the Sahel is not expected to stabilize the region and may come to be perceived as a failure. African countries will claim their rights to remain neutral within this new Cold War logic, engaged with various players according to their specific interests and the interests of their people. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully, I've informed you with regards to the current Cold War particular issues happening in the continent of Africa and why major political partners are vying for geopolitical interest in the region. Why African countries also should pay attention with regards to things happening in their region. We want to thank you for watching. Let us know if you find this content more inspiring and informative and why you think that these countries should not turn Africa to be a playground. We want to thank you for watching. We're looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.